It is a wild Wednesday here on Connecticut Style, and today we're going to get up close and personal with some with what some consider an eight-legged beast. It's the tarantula, but not to worry. Our next guest says, despite their bad reputation, there's lots to learn about these gentle giants of the spider world. Joining me now from the Stanford Museum and Nature Center is Lisa Monticelli. Hello there. Hi. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having us. So tarantulas are a little bit intimidating, and they kind of get a bad rap. Don't Absolutely, they? they do. You know, it's always one of those animals that end up on people's. Um, list that makes them a little nervous and certainly a uh, trip by the sci-fi channel would probably produce <laughs> a movie or two on them but a lot of that is extreme misinformation they're actually very gentle and extremely important to the habitats that they live in okay and why are they so important uh, they are the bug eaters so on, on average you can imagine that anything that's going to be able to eat um, other bugs that do damage to crops that promote disease um, is going to be make a huge difference and it's said that about for every one bug that you see there would be about a hundred other if there weren't things like spiders and other animals that were to eat them. Wow. Can I touch him? Does yeah, you can hold her if you want. This is Charlotte. Um, she's one of our teaching animals at the Stanford Museum. She's oh. a Chilean rose-haired tarantula, so from Chile. And she is a very, very docile um, creature, so we actually let the kids work with her on occasion. Now, Charlotte is poisonous? Venomous? She's venomous. What? So the difference, basically, venom is has a delivery system. So things like bees, wasps, snakes, scorpions, um, tarantulas, and spiders have fangs or stingers of sorts, so they <laughs> inject venom into their prey. It's used for defense as well as to get their food. Now, why are they hairy? Um, hair is basically to help them to do a couple of things. Um, they work kind of like spidey sense in a way, so they can help pick up vibration. Um, they can certainly help to hold in moisture for tarantulas that live like her in sort of a more drier area. Okay. And some of the tarantulas can actually shoot their hairs. So oh, it's a wow. defense mechanism. Where um, do we typically find tarantulas? They're not in Connecticut. Not in Connecticut, no. We have a couple of larger spiders, like wood spiders and wolf spiders, that people can see, and they can be a little hairy, so people get a little nervous. Um, but tarantulas in the United States are going to be more along the um, Texas, um, New Mexico kind of area. Um, and then, of course, in warmer areas. So they live all over the place. Um, you can find them, um, you know, in Africa, South America, Central America, mm -hmm. um, Australia, all over the world. We've got different species. Charlotte's not really moving too much. No, it's a is little she, chilly in here. She likes me? This is, she, yeah, she's very good. Oh, okay. um, she's used Thanks to being me. handled um, by people that maybe is uh, their first time. Um, it's also a little chilly in here, so that makes them a little slower. <laughs> I see. Now, where, how did you get Charlotte? Um, we actually adopted her from a tarantula breed her, breeder, rather, who had sold her as a pet and somebody didn't want her anymore. So we oh. adopted her for education. Um, we've had her for about a year and a half, um, and we are guesstimating that she's of like three-ish or so. And how, t how long do they typically um, live If for? she is a girl, we are yeah. guessing that she's a girl, because this is, again, what we were told. It's not always um, something that you can tell until they get a little older. Females can actually live to be 20 or 30, oh, wow. um, and males are a little bit less long or so, 5 to 10 if or I so. If I put her down, will she walk around? Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right there, Charlotte. She kind of blends in really well with those. She does. She matches. Yeah, tarantulas come. Um, one of the things that's great about the exhibit is that they can see different spiders and tarantulas from all over the world, and they have such different colors. Um, our other guest that we brought today, we'll see. Um, we can take a look at it if now, we Now, are want. they friends? Um, they've never met. Uh, tarantulas oh, okay. are usually not particularly social unless it's that um, time of, uh, you know, love. But sometimes oh, the boys nice. end up getting eaten by the girls, so the love time sometimes can be happens. short. Um, <laughs> This is called a green bottle blue, which is actually one of the rarer species of species of tarantulas in the world. We'll see. She's also a little bit more skittish, so we'll see if she's going to let me pick okay. her up. Okay. Does this one have a name? Um, we were calling her Pookie. Actually, one of your All staff right, Pookie decided. Wow, did. Pookie's really colorful. So she's got lots of colors. I call her with the kids the um, Spider-Man tarantula because she's got that beautiful blue and red. She's definitely a bit more active and a little bit faster than Charlotte. Um, and these guys are native to Venezuela. But it, coming to the exhibit, you can see we've got 22 different species of tarantulas. Some of them are, you know, big. Some of them are small. Some of them are black and white. I mean, the color and the biodiversity is just amazing with wow. these creatures. That's a that's very pretty. So talk to me about some of the programs. Uh, if you come to the, the center? The yeah, it's center. a great place if anybody hasn't visited. Um, usually we're known for our nature center and our working farm. Um, but having the tarantula exhibit through s the beginning of September is... So you're gonna She's go going up right way. up your arm there. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have you do this way. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of programs that go along with us. Our most popular actually is on Tuesdays at 4 o'clock. They can come and see the spiders get their snacks. Oh, so what do they eat? 
Uh, they eat uh, mostly crickets in the wild. They'll eat everything from different types of invertebrates um, to other spiders um, and tarantulas to birds and such. Um, no gazpacho for them unless you want to add some <laughs> bugs to it. But um, other than that, that's their primary. They're not very good vegetarians. Um, and it's kind of neat because the kids can watch them um, work to be able to catch the tarantulas and as they eat. And I'm not sure that you'd want to invite tarantulas over for dinner. They do have an interesting method of eating. Um, their venom basically takes the tran or the cricket or whatever they're eating and turns it into a milkshake and basically they get to happens. almost slurp their dinner which is oh. kind of very cool um, so we're really not going to see these in Connecticut, but if you no. do see them somewhere, you want to stay clear in the wild? Yeah, I mean, tarantulas, again, um, you know, they get a reputation of being fearsome, and most, for the most part, um, if they were to be confronted by a predator, whether it be human or something else, are going to try to run. Um, this one having the bright colors, you know, is a warning coloration, always helps to kind of keep predators away. But there's very few that were, are actually going to try to go after you. So That's most safe. of them are going to want to hide, and depending on whether they are a burrowing tarantula living on the ground, or a arboreal tarantula living in the, the trees, then their methods are going to be a little bit different. But what's the other uh, reaction when the kids get to take these out and play um, with them? They and love see them. them. You know, I'm a big fan. I always like tell people of the underdog. So I love the animals that are kind of the slimy and scaly that uh, people always think are icky and and are maybe not be important. So I think a big part of my job is to be sort of the spokesperson for those guys. And so having the kids come up and teach their parents about how cool they are and how important spiders and tarantulas are to their habitat. Habitat, it's just amazing. You know, it's great to be able to instill that in the next generation and get them to be um, interested, helping right? to protect. Yeah, because this is the reason that this tarantula is very rare is actually due to habitat loss, and that's Same. unfortunately due to things that people do that make life difficult for some of the animals in different habitats. You now I know that uh, if we come down to Stanford, there's a lot of trails, acres and yeah, acres. Yeah, we of have a great. I said we have a we have great trails. We have a um, Wheels in the Woods universally accessible trail. We've got a working farm with everything from free range fowl to goats oxen, horses. Um, wow. We have a nature center and we also have, um, you know, obviously revolving exhibits. This is the, the first that we've ever done on tarantulas or such. And we also have uh, astronomy programs as well. So we can come wow. Friday nights and take a look at our telescope and we have a small planetarium for groups as well. How great. It's a fun way to spend the summer it's and even great, learn something while you go down there, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it's a great place for families because there's so many different things to do. So if you're one of those families that has, you know, a bunch of kids that have different things that they like to do and mm -hmm. it's hard to please everybody, um, we're really great place to be Perfect. able to do that. Charlotte really has made herself at home yeah. here. She's just chilling. All right. Well, Lisa, thank you so much thank for you. coming and bringing the friends here with you. And for more information on Tarantulas Alive and Up Close, the exhibit, it's happening now through September 3rd at the Stanford Museum and Nature Center. Go to WTNH.com, click on style. You'll find all the info there.